Good evening, everybody. It's 8.16 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, August 6th. I have some breaking news about this debacle that's going on with Coinbase. Uh, I don't know if most of you know, but I was working with uh, a law firm about the BCH debacle, in which BCH was manipulated when it was put back on Coinbase. And uh, unfortunately, Coinbase has no cre credibility in the New York court anymore. Uh, let me just turn this off, this background stuff that I got running in here. So. so you can understand what actually I'm involved in, so you know, guys, I'm not bullshitting you. Okay, this is the Grant Law Firm. Her name is Linda Grant. Uh, they had a problem with uh, the Bitcoin Cash, and I just happened to start talking to them, and they went in their office, and I helped them out. What happened is uh, the court has ruled Coinbase in the, in the Coinbase case with the BCH. The judge denied the motion to dismiss the negligent ca uh, claim on behalf of the purchasers. And, uh, in other words, Coinbase tried to get the case dismissed over their obvious insider trading of Bitcoin Cash. They tried to get it dismissed. When the judge denied them uh, based on the evidence that he received, he denied, he says there's enough evidence here to go to trial. So I'm not dismissing the case. They have a valid case. Well, Coinbase then tried to uh, made a motion to compel arbitration which they denied so many people, including myself, when I asked them to arbitrate. Now, all of a sudden now, they want to arbitrate because they realize if this goes to trial, they're screwed. So here's the letter. She's addressing me. This is Linda Grant at the Grant Law Firm. The court has ruled in the Coinbase case the judge denied the motion to dismiss the negligent claim on behalf of the purchases, which would be us, and denied the motion to compel arbitration, which they should have done, but they wouldn't do. All right, I, I, I've been helping them for a while, and uh, here you'll see what I what I what I sent to them. In final review of the trading platform Coinbase Pro with the able assistant of the New York Department of Financial Services, I concluded that the market maker is directly manipulating the price of LTC in order to maintain a more profitable spread beyond the market more. I have a letter confirming my suspicion leading into the fact that Coinbase response to the New York Def uh, Department of Financial and Service Inquiry, which I have in hand, simple math calculations will bear out that my conclusion is based in fact. Please forgive my rather harsh comments as trying to deal with Coinbase on my own has proved rather frustrating. Payday loans are considered predatory for the high interest rate. Crypto exchanges, in my view, are considered predatory by their unchecked price manipulation. Why these crypto exchanges are allowed to continue in operation is beyond my understanding. Now, that that statement was uh, handed over to the judge with my credentials. Okay? That's why she sent that back to me. All right? Now I'm going to show you the file that we have on BCH. Okay. You can also see that's Linda Grant. That's the chairman's office of the SEC. Michael Grief of the DFS in New York. Susan Gradman of the CFTC. Now, now, can you can you understand what I'm doing here, people? You you see all you you see these all here, okay? These are all the people that are involved in this. This is very serious. I should be taken seriously. This isn't. I'm not making up stuff over here, okay? It doesn't. It doesn't. I don't do that. I'm a professional. All right. So now you can see the, the chairman of the F, the chairman office of the SEC, the chairman Mnuchin, has got a copy of all of this stuff. Okay. This is why he got, he told you his remarks about the were directed at the exchanges because he realizes after we showed him 
that yes, the exchanges are the culprit here, the trading, uh, the trading uh, atmosphere. It's not cryptocurrency. They're not going to ban cryptocurrency. Don't misunderstand that. He mentioned the exchanges and the manipulation that is going on in the exchanges. They see it. It's been made clear to them. I that was that was my job. Okay. Michael Grief is an agent at the DFS, and Su Susan Gradman is uh, is the head lawyer of the CFTC. Okay. So you know I'm in contact with them. There's no bullshitting. This is from. Linda Grant, Grant Law Firm, New York Metro Super Lawyer. She won the awards for the four years. Okay. And this is her responding to me. The court has ruled in Coinbase case. The judge denied the motion to dismiss the negligent claim on behalf of purchases and denied the motion to compel arbitration. So now Coinbase has no two judges ordered them. You're going to trial Coinbase. And Coinbase wanted to go to arbitration. And we all know why. They know they're going to lose. So here goes the case. Okay. This is the case I helped them work on. That's why they, they say thank you for your help. I helped them get this case pushed through. All right. We got uh, this exchange has more evidence of manipulation everywhere you look. It's so easy to spot. And since the judge has, uh, what you say, a deep understanding of this market, probably beyond four or five times what I know, he knows what I'm speaking about, and that's why. See, order denying motion to compel, granting in part and denying in part motion to dismiss. So Coinbase tried to get the case dismissed. And Coinbase a renewed motion to compel arbitration is denied. So they wanted to arbitrate with us. After we, uh, we've been after them, hey, I want to arbitrate, I want to arbitrate. What do they do? Well, you go look at my channel. Uh, now, now they want to arbitrate after all the grief they put us through. No, no, that's gone. You're, you're, you're gonna, Bend over, here it comes, Coinbase. That's all I could say. So you can read it here. The scope of arbitration provision, which extends to disputes arising under the user agreement. You see? Now all of a sudden they want to arbitrate. Before you couldn't even get, you send them a letter, you, you, you get crickets. See, the standard of claiming has not been met for the plaintiff's claims premised on Coinbase's alleged facilitation of insider trading or alleged market manipulation. True enough, Coinbase maintains a policy against insider trading and marketing manipulation. GDAX trading rules. You see, the trading rules, I, I dug those up and I went into those. But Coinbase's adoption to this policy doesn't make these disputes arise under user agreement any more than the company's general policy against sexual harassment. Employees, employees would subsume a Title VII claim to the war contract. They just can't decide, well, we can do any crime we want because you have to arbitrate with us. That's what the judge is saying. You just can't just write it up, well, uh, in this case, even though we're screwed up, go to arbitration. That's what the rule. That's the rule that we made up outside the court of law. The court of law says no. We decide what's prosecutable or not. Not you. That's basically what it came down to. You see, Mark, insider trading and market manipulation. I told you they lost, and I have proof of the market manipulation. The same stuff that I'm showing you every day is what's, what was presented to the judge about market manipulation. 
on Coinbase. It's it's all over the place. It's undeniable proof. This judge has experience. They review the evidence themselves and say, well, they dismiss the case based on the grounds that the person placing the charges against Coinbase doesn't have enough substantial evidence for us to continue or go to a trial. And then they could dismiss the trial. Coinbase tried that. They lost because the evidence we presented, the evidence that I showed you, shows market manipulation, wholesale, it's broken down the formulas. So they cannot get rid of the market. They can't get dismiss this case because there's evidence of market manipulation. Especially when they bring something out of maintenance and put it back online and they leave it in limit on a limit order only for two hours. And that's a story in itself that a lot of people don't understand. That they do that for a reason. This, the plaintiff's other theory of life that Coinbase negligently launched a dysfunctional trading market for Bitcoin Cash presents a lower question. But this claim, too, is collateral to the user agreement. Even if the plaintiffs cannot access Coinbase without accepting the terms of the user agreement, therefore cannot have been edged but, but for the agreement. Coinbase neg negligence is actionable, separate, and apart from any contractual remedies the plaintiffs may or may not have available. So, doesn't matter. You can be sued for negligence. Look, Coinbase bore the duty of reasonable care to its traders. Originate. They're, they're screwed because after this BCH case is done and it's and it's and it's it's wiped out, LTC and, and BTC are next. Because it just fall it falls underneath that. So I don't know if they're gonna do everything all at once. I'll have to speak to the lawyer. But as far as BCH, Bitcoin Cash is concerned, that's going to trial. The judge says there's substantial evidence they have negligence. All right? See, according to negligent claim, does not arise. They don't have, according to, to Coinbase, the user agreement, it states nothing about negligence. Okay, so it's it's going to go it's going to go to trial. Their negligence. In other words, this is the same thing that's going to happen to them for LTC because again, I tell them, hey, look, your market makers manipulating the prices of LTC and Bitcoin. Here's the evidence, I give it to you, and they're not doing anything. So it's going to fall under negligence again, and they're going to lose again. They already lost this because the judge would have dismissed it if he didn't think they had enough evidence to proceed with this as, uh, uh, with the trial. And Coinbase tried to compel people to go to arbitration again. The judge said, no, you're not doing that. You denied there was any wrongdoing. I see evidence of wrongdoing. Now you brought it in front of me, you try to dismiss the trial. Now you want to go to arbitration? No. Arbitration denied. You're going to trial. That's basically what the judge said here. Okay. Cash is denied, but the motion to dismiss negligent claims by the plaintiffs who attempted to sell Bitcoin's cash is granted. That's it. That they're screwed. They're screwed. Negligence has four elements under California law: duty, breach, causation, and injury. You understand? In <laughs> other words, Coinbase said, no, nah, no, nah, it's not our duty relying on the, the, to, to, to possess a duty to, to exercise reasonable care against economic loss of others. This is the same thing it's going to go with the LTC case. So after this case is done, we move on to the next one. You can see it all here. 
See, I get these documents because I'm involved in the case. Okay, this was sent directly from the lawyer that's on the case to me, and I helped him. There was tr there was trades inside Coinbase. There was trades that were in 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 the system before just before they actually the trading came online. That's what they call a dis uh, dysfunctional market. See, negligent launch. They're, they're screwed. They're screwed because we have the evidence. I went sourcing to other traders who actually had um, the actual opening of Bitcoin uh, cash recorded. Like I record the market every day. They recorded it. And you could see everything was screwed up. You see? They breached their duty to maintain a functional market. For starters, the fact that Coinbase halted trading within three minutes of launch is indicative of dysfunction. So are they going to deny that they, they halted trading within three minutes of launch? The boys have also identified precaution Coinbase could have taken to avert the massive spike in price of Bitcoin Cash on its exchange. Most probably Coinbase could have announced its launch of trading Bitcoin Cash more than an hour in advance, which would have permitted more buyers and sellers to place limit orders. And why do you place limit orders? Of course, the system was placed in limit order only for two hours when it was brought back up. But they don't tell you that. So you got screwed. See? See what they, they, they uh, launched trading when only purchase orders were pending. So you couldn't sell your Bitcoin at that, that your Bitcoin cash at that high price if you wanted to. You see what what they did? So they had purchase orders that were pending, and you would tr and you would try to come in at the launch to sell your coin at that four thousand dollars. You couldn't do it. Look, a plausible look. The boys have alleged a plausible motive. You see, the Chicago Mo Open trading in Bitcoin futures the day before the launch. The complaint properly pleads that this, uh, this alleged breach caused the boys' injury since Coinbase launched Bitcoin trade trading under these circumstances. Plausible the reason why the boys' market orders were filled by such high priced limit orders. See that? So even the people who lost their ability to sell at high prices, like myself, was we weren't allowed in the market. my case, I can prove that the market maker is manipulating the market because Coinbase complied with the invest in the New York Department of Financial Services and issued a statement that's contrary to what's happening on the exchange, just like in this case. So Coinbase is going to trial in New York.
this is all available to me. So I'm make I'm showing you what I'm involved in and making it available to anybody that can understand this. This is to show them I ain't no schlub, okay? In New York, probably after the, after all of these uh, trials and stuff, I'm gonna be the go-to guy in New York for this. If people need any help, a lawyer, I'll, I'll do it for a fee. What's right? But this one I did for free. Because, to tell you the truth, when I see open manipulation like this and I see people getting hurt, uh, they, they, they need, some, somebody needs to step up. I have a lot of people saying you can't do anything. Does this look like I'm not doing anything? They're going to trial. What, el what else could I do? Okay, the motion to dismiss the, the fraud claims is granted. Okay. So that that they got away with, but the fraud, the, the fraud allegations on LTC, those are actually provable because I I have the numbers that the uh, market maker is supposed to be working off of, and he's not. So that's outright fraud. They made a false statement to the New York Department of Financial Services. And I have that statement. And then with simple math calculations, I could prove that statement is false. So that's fraud. And also, you see what they're saying over here? Pump the value of Bitcoin Cash with his bullet public statements. Not to say nothing, but him and Charlie Lee did that on, on LTC. They pumped it up, and Charlie, what, dumped his about 380? I doubt, I doubt LTC will ever see those prices again, $380. Because Charlie's out. He's, he's, he's living comfortable now. So there's no reason to pump up the price that high anymore, people. He's not. He's not going to get away with this. With this. With this fraud that he did. So here, whether they did it on purpose, other words, if you if you if you did it on purpose or not if you were negligent and you caused hurt to somebody you have to pay if you did it on purpose you have to pay it, it it doesn't matter in this case because you're either stupid or you plan to do it either case you're guilty of the same crime so this goes to show you this is the case Wait, wait when they see the, the, the place for LTC. How, you see, I got evidence that's, that's sufficient to prove that the market's being manipulated and why it's being manipulated. So, this is going to, that, that case is going to be a further case down the line. That I can prove. So right now, Coinbase, the launch, they bungled the launch, and I think the launch, the launch was uh, for Bitcoin Cash was bump. Bu if you ask me, my own personal opinion, the launch was bungled because of the inside traders of Coinbase. They 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 bungled it in an effort to try to take advantage of the market. So. 
Now it's going to trial. First Coinbase tried to dismiss it. That was denied. Then they tried to compel arbitration. You know something? The judge must have looked at them funny to deny arbitration. Actually, the judge could have said, okay, go arbitrate. Goodbye, the both of you. But no, the judge, when the judge sees something like this, that he knows that they can't prove that there was insider trading, but he could see this absolute negligence that hurt Coinbase's purchases, and then that Coinbase actively knew about it and tried to dismiss it. Then when they found out that that, that there was enough evidence uh, evidence for grounds to proceed to a trial, then they tried to invoke their user agreement and tell everybody you had to arbitrate with them. Meanwhile, the judge probably has statements up on his desk from these people, including myself, that they denied us arbitration. And we went through all the re legal parameters to get it. And they just didn't respond. So now you want arbitration? The judge probably said, oh, now you want arbitration? Well, guess what? You're not getting it. So they couldn't prove, you see, they couldn't prove the fraud. But when this LTC case is coming up, I can prove it. Of course, Coinbase told me. They gave me it. So Coinbase is going to trial and they'll probably lose. Why? Because they have too many complaints against them. And the, and and the you know and a lot of the complaints can be proven. It, it, my, my case after this case is done and they go on trial for negligence. Okay? Negligence can mean, yeah, you had insider trading going on, but you were too stupid to know about it. That's negligence. Even though they could deny, well, we don't have any proof, but hey, you screwed up. So now you can see this case is pretty much going to trial. This is one of many cases coming up. Now, now I'm at work. I, I need people to spread this around. I need people to start contributing information to me. A little here, a little there. Next thing you know, the, on the LTC side, I pretty much have evidence that they are manipulating the market. So that's fraud. I, I, I have that to uh, Coinbase's own, uh, that, that I found out the market maker owns those trades. And everything they stated about how he was using those trades not to interfere with the market price has proven to be false by simple calculations. So that, that's a different case that's going to come down the road. All right, people. So now you can see. See, look, these are the people that I'm in contact with. This was the lawyer. She came back to me. Thanks for your help. We'll be in touch because of this. So They'll be, they'll, they might be seeing me at, at, at this trial coming up, the BCH trial, and, and definitely they'll be seeing me for the LTC trial. Now, I, tr I reached out to Coinbase and tried to settle this. How many times, people, you go to my channel, you start going through the videos, you'll actually see me in phone calls, 
letters, all kinds of stuff. I tried every uh, talking to their global head investigator, tr trying to tell them, hey, look, you guys are, uh, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but your market makers, or some, when I first started, there's somebody here manipulating the market price with these two trades. They're the one, Coinbase was the ones who told me that it was the market maker, if you read the letter in the previous video before this one. And they stated what he was supposed to be doing to keep the, the market honest the way he was supposed to be. He was not supposed to mark, uh, manipulate the prices because he's putting his trades 40 to 44 cents away from the mid-market price. Yet when we do the calculations, his trades are at equidistance and they're not 40 to 44 cents away. Like they, they, They're the ones who made the statement, not me. So that's the evidence that's going to be used on LTC to, to show that the market maker is manipulating the price. So there's no doubt in my mind, as soon as the judge sees that, that's going to trial too. So there you go, people. That's that's what I've been working on. And uh, hopefully one down, a couple more to go. It, take, it takes time, but I'm, we're getting it done. We're getting it done. All right, guys. That's the end of the show. Let's see what they manipulated Litecoin down to. Uh, $92. Let's see where the... Uh, we bounced off the bottom there. They manipulated it down to the over sold. Let's hope we go to a nice high overbought condition. Yeah, if we hit 80, do we are we starting? We're starting a little higher if we bounce off of here now. The last bounce we bounced at $90.63. Now we bounced off, let's see. 91 a, little, a dollar higher so we might go up to 105 if we break 106 then we'll run we'll run free it's all up to the market maker but I'm just guessing from previous performances of the market maker that he's just gonna do the same skit on the stage that he's on called point all right people Good luck with your trading, but be aware of what's going on. You all have a good night.